Alright, hello everyone and welcome to Serious Business, where we only discuss the most serious of business, ironically, most of the time. But, uh, and I am your, still have not figured out what I am to you guys, Ronan, and this is... Blank. Really? That's what you're going with, blank? Yes, you're going to have to live with that. <sighs> Fine. Th this is blank. I was going to give you a better name, but I guess not. Uh, Alright, anyways, so, uh, we're going to be trying a shorter show today, so just, uh, let's get started with today's topic, which is bad games. Oh, this is going to be fun. And by bad games, I don't mean just, like, bad video games or bad sports games. I mean bad games and gaming games as a concept, as a whole. Okay, so like all of sports. No, some sports are actually super fun, dude. Okay, but it's like, uh, in talking about bad games, we can talk about a bad sport, we can talk about a bad video game, a bad board game, whatever. So, let's get started with the most obvious question. What is the worst game? How about you go first? I need to ponder this. Okay, I'll go first then. Uh, Dark Souls. Interesting. I was going to go with any dating sim that ever existed. Those can be pretty bad, I'll say that, but not as bad as Dark Souls. Because, like, with some games, I don't enjoy them, but I understand why people like them. I don't understand that with Dark Souls. I mean, the thing about Dark Souls is it's entirely about the challenge, in the sense that it's supposed to be soul-crushingly hard to beat, because yeah. it's more rewarding when you get to the end. True, but the only real challenge lies in two, the last two-thirds of the game, because for that almost that entire time, you can't see where you're going, the platforms are very thin. And the one rewarding parts of those games seem to be the boss fights because at the begin it's weird, they kind of switched in the game. Like, at the beginning of the game, the boss fights were not great because of the arena. Because otherwise, the bo those bosses would be extremely easy to take down, right? I suppose. And in the last portion of the game, the boss fights are just like, well, for the most part, they're kind of masterpieces. Like... They're honestly fantastic. I mean, it can also be argued that Dark Souls actually gets easier as you go on because you've leveled up, you've had time to grind, you've built your perfect weapon and armor set. Yeah, true, but at the same time, it's just kind of like, okay, I have all this good gear, I can take on anything, then, oh wait, I couldn't see that cliff edge right over there because I can literally only see what is about two feet in front of me. It is literally the definition of trial and error. Yes, and I I don't think that's good game design. I just don't. Like, with Cupheads, and I have been playing Cupheads a little bit, like, it's hard. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the game myself, but I can understand why people would be a fan of that game. It is subjectively a good game. I, I just can't see that with Dark Souls. I mean, I haven't personally played Cuphead, but when I, I've seen reviews of it, and they're, almost everyone has compared it to the difficulty of Dark Souls. No! Oh, yeah. No! The ones I have watched, they say, this game is no, like, slightly easier than Dark Souls. No, like, I know that people say that, but Cuphead's is no Dark Souls. Cuphead's is manageable. It is all fair but tough, except for, like, maybe one fight. Let's see, which fight is that? The um, Bumblebee or the other one? The Bumblebee. <laughs> yeah. The Bumblebee is honestly just... it's dumb. It follows bee physics perfectly, like obviously bees have powerful magic and bombs and turn into bombers when they are in a rough spot. Yeah. I actually had a friend who was having a lot of trouble with that fight, and it's actually uh, mo it's actually Weapon Mojo, and I'm using his internet name right now, 
You know who I'm talking about? Yes. And he he was raging so hard at it. It was actually hilarious to watch because he's pretty much start. We started playing it together, but he's pretty much doing a solo run at this point just because I'm doing other stuff. And it's just like. He, he's just so upset. It's great. Oh, I'd love to see it. You, you need to record this just for me. If, if not for your channel, just for uh, me. I'll figure out a way, man. I'll figure out a way. It, I should... It's called Hidden Camera. <laughs> I, I actually don't have a good camera right now, so I can't. But, yeah. Working on getting a capture card and all that whatnot. But anyways, so now your turn to answer the question. What is the worst game? And remember, game as a concept. I mean, I have multiple answers towards this, but I'm just going to focus on the video game because I feel more people listening will know what I'm talking about. Okay. Opposed to me saying, like, the Aragon board game. I don't think anyone remembers that existed. I, I didn't know it existed until now. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. Well, um, basically... Dating sims as a genre are not typically the best games. I will say, they can be really funny. Like, th uh, that specific one, Dream Daddy. That concept <laughs> was hilarious. Dream Daddy, yes. did it Did it need to exist? No. In no right should that game have existed. It, it's wonderful. Everything about Dream Daddy is wonderful. Okay, blank. I, except literally everything. Um, But one to focus on that's... I, I think I had the most grievances with was called Honey Pop. I, now, I did play a little of this, but the reason I hated it so much is it was literally Candy Crush, but to get into bed with women. That is what the concept of this game was. And it just, these games don't exactly have good story necessarily. I mean, some of them... Can, but it's usually you just running around trying to have sex with as many females as you can. But that's good. <laughs> nah, man, I'm just joking. I I understand what you're getting at, but I've actually heard Honey Pop, for what it's worth, is a difficult game. Yeah, Candy Crush is too, but I'd rather play that. Yeah, but there's more reward with Honey Pop. Yeah, like a quick screen grab of the character in underwear. For a lot of people, that's reward enough, man. Eh, I, I still, I could never find the appeal to those games. And okay, that's just personally what I feel is one of the worst types of video games, is dating sims. I can understand that. But while we're on bad games, I, I'm going to rant for a second here. The newest Tekken game, I think it's Tekken 7, right? Yes. That is easily the most disappointing fighting game I have ever played. And it infuriates me for personal reasons. Please elaborate, because then I'll share my mind on this. Okay, okay, so here's what was happening. So I was playing with a friend of mine, and we were just... I was playing because it was on his system, and he said, the rule for that is that once you beat him or someone else, once you get a legitimate win on your own, you get to customize your own character, right? So naturally, I was doing it. I was being Steve because I like the boxer. He is very cool and fun. And, okay, so he chose a random one, and he ended up being Bob. Now, so we're on, like two rounds each. We each won two. We were playing to free. And it's just like, it goes into the close-up slow motion thing, and it's like, oh shoot, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna win this right here, right? So I'm excited. And then the entirety of my fist, like, not even a little bit, the entire thing, it clips through Bob's head. Okay? There is nothing okay about that. That is inexcusable. <laughs> and then I'm like, I asked someone, like, okay, what was that all about? And then he said, that's just the game. Bob's hitboxes his stomach. And I'm just like, and it's not his face? <laughs> like, visually, that game is a masterpiece. 
I'll give it that. The visuals are very good, the graphics are fantastic, I love the look of the game. But where it counts, it feels like they called it in. Like hitboxes. Or, you know, setting up physics so that some characters are naturally just going to be better than others. Now, I mean, that, that last part can be said of almost any game of the genre of these one-on-one -on -one fighting games. Literally, characters' movesets sometimes just complement each other more than others. The developers don't nitpick on what works. Yes, but at the same time, with that game, it's just... It's palpable, you know? You can really feel it. In other games, that is just not the case. Like, a game that we're actually going to have to play later, that's why I asked you. A game called Skullgirls. There is so much love in that game. Like, one of the training mo modes things? You want to know what it does? Want to know what it does? It actually drew out the hitboxes. So you can see on what character, where they are. And the hitboxes light up yellow to show you stun. And it's like, that's so nice. It's just so nice. And then, like, there's Tekken, and it's just like... Why can't I punch some characters in the face? Now, I personally believe Tekken is actually one of the better games of its genre, primarily because of the... I personally like the control scheme, how each button correlates to a different limb. Most games it would just be like, okay, press this, and they do this combo. Do Press these two, they do this. But with this game, it's literally... You have to memorize every exact movement you can do... There's a lot more timing, I think, also in this game on how combos work. Because, like, let's go, let's think about Lucky Chloe, how you have to have, like, I think it was described as a sixth of a second to combo her thing perfectly. And the more you do it, the better damage, but it's really hard to do. This game's, a, I think Tekken is a lot more in-depth in the terms of the actual fighting aspect. And, I mean, the hitboxes... Yes, those can be garbage, but the same can be said for, like, Jigglypuff's hitbox on uh, its rest attack in Smash. That thing is the smallest hitbox in Smash, and it's almost impossible to land. Yet, with practice, you can almost always do it. Yes, but at the same time, it's Jigglypuff. It's, it's Jigglypuff. Yes, what I believe to be the best character in the game. <laughs> wow, you would not want to look at the tiers list then. <laughs> I don't care about that tiers list. I beat my brother consistently with Palatina. <laughs> oh, Palatina's not bad. Yes, Palatina does not have a full move set, but Palatina's moves are actually really solid. Yeah, it's really funny. He chooses random all the time. Here comes Falco against Palatina. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, my friend, Elite Papa T, he... Yeah, internet names, dude. I do it for security. Everyone needs an internet name. If you're on the internet, get an internet name. Facts. But anyways, old, my friend Elite Papa T, he actually mains Palatina, and he consistently beats the someone else on the floor, uh, Gruffy Spackler. He actually has a YouTube channel too. Check him out. He is very good at what he does. He he he's great. Honestly, look at him. But anyways, he he actually mains. Bayonetta, right? Best character in the game. <sighs> and he is... And he... And he still loses, like, a good bit. At least to my knowledge. I'm not sure how things have been changing lately. If, or if they have. He actually loses a good bit to Papa T's uh, Palatina. And it's just, like... It's ridiculous. Like, it's very cool to watch. <clears throat> I mean... In these games, any character can technically be good based on how well the player does with the character and how bad the opponent is at characters. Yeah, but like, uh, Gruffy, he actually plays a pretty good Bayonetta. He plays a good Bayonetta. And it's just, I think it comes down to uh, Papa T has just kind of mastered Palatina. I love hearing people say mastered Palatina. 
That is probably the best sentence to hear when talking about Super Smash Bros. Because everyone thinks it's just a giant joke. I mean, like, I'm I'm just watching him play sometimes, and it's just like, wow, he is doing really well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, Palatina, with her, you can easily just... You don't even have to use most of her attacks. You just have focus on her down smash, reflect, and possibly counter. Those are really what you need to be using with her. Okay. And from what I understand, her jab is actually like a grab, too? You know, I've never tried jabbing, so... Uh, I, I, I have a, my own particular way, just like I have a particular way of playing Link. Oh, yeah, I actually have been learning Smash a little bit more. Hmm. I've actually been learning a little bit more. I've uh, mastered the basics, and I've chosen a main in the form of Toon Link. See, I prefer Adult Link. There's really? really no difference. I just like, for whatever reason, Adult Link feels better. I like Toon Link because his bombs, the explosion is really cartoony, as he is a toon. And it honestly, it just makes me happy to see him throw a bomb. Like, I know out of context that sounds very bad, but Toon Link, your bombs make me happy. Now this... We, we've gotten far off track, but I'm going to add something else on Smash. One challenge I love to do is take Zelda, see how many times I can hit someone with her recovery, and kill them with the recovery. Does, does that really work a lot? Uh, with her recovery, you can you trigger it, of course, by doing up B, but then you can direction it. So you can go down, left, right, ah. diagonal. And it also, around, I think, 70, starts hitting like a smash attack would. Wow, really? Her recovery is her most broken feature. I mean, you ob there's other things she has, like her up smash is really good. Her aerial up can kill someone very easily. But it's fun to see how well you can do just by teleporting around and hitting your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that sounds fun. And, you know, actually... Getting back on topic a little bit, because this, while well, this was fun, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what else was a bad game? The original Olympic Games, like Ancient Greece. Oh, those... heck no. No, those were awesome. No, they weren't. I don't even know half of what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so, basically it's like the original Olympic Games were in Ancient Greece, right? They were mostly tests of strength, like discus, wrestling, so on and so forth. However, here was the caveat. To ensure that there was no cheating, and also I did finger exclamation points, if you're wondering, around that no cheating, all participants in the games had to be completely naked. Oh, that sounds even better. <laughs> N no, because while they say it was for no cheating, given how things were at the time... Like, the Romans, they would actually have a lot of, like, gay sex, because they saw, well, males would anyways, because males saw males as their only true intellectual equal. So it's just like, given how those were in a, within, like, a few hundred years of each other, I think, right? Uh, I mean, Greece did kind of die to Rome, if I remember. Yeah, so, like, it's just, like, those were pretty close together, so, like, I mean, I don't know, you know what's up. When I actually went to Italy, we learned a lot of interesting stuff on our stop in Rome. Like, don't, don't quote me on this, but okay. I remember the tour guide talking about how there had <clears throat> been evidence that they filled the Colosseum with water and had actual battles between ships. Like, they brought oh. ships in there and had actual battles. Oh, that's so cool! They also have had an entire underground area, and that's where they'd store, like, all of the lions, elephants, truthfully, any animal they could get their hands on. They probably had a storage thing of fish down there. Uh, uh yeah, I actually heard about that one. I heard about that and one. they had a actual elevator system to bring up. Of course, probably run by slaves, but... Yeah, but I mean, 
for entertain from an entertainment point of view, that's very cool. Yeah, I mean, it, we saw what it kind of would look like if they filled it with water. Of course, the first few stairs kind of gone. But yeah, I is supposed that that actually would have worked. Huh, that's really interesting. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think that would have been the best thing to watch per se. I mean, probably back then that was about all the entertainment they got. The Coliseum. Yeah, but. I mean, now that I'd kind of rather see it over something like that happening over the ocean than in a really, really small arena. Yeah, that that's fair. I mean, the Roman Colosseum is by no means small. Oh no, it's huge, and so are the stairs. Literally, they are. Sl this is probably due to time, but they are slanted, so going down, you're almost falling. <laughs> <laughs> and also, they're probably about two feet and a foot or two in height. Maybe huh. They're decently sized stairs. Wow, that's that's wow. Like I, we walked all over Rome. It was an entire day's walking tour. I think the Colosseum was the best thing we saw. Nice, nice. All right, well, uh, it's looking about like we're about at thirty minutes, I think. So, uh, any last comments you want to make? Dark Souls is a great game. Don't listen to him. Okay, and I'm going to say Dark Souls is a horrible game. It's too inconsistent, and the only challenge lies in the area. Actually, the game is terribly consistent. If you think about it, the enemies always respawn in the same spot. Not talking about the normal enemies. Talking about the bosses. They're either masterpieces or they're terrible. <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh, anyways, for anyone who's listening, thanks for listening, and... Uh, uh, this has been Ronan and Blank, so uh, this will be us signing off. If you have any, like, comment, subscribe, and if you have any bus serious business that you think needs discussing, let me know in the comments down below. Goodbye.